Hello everyone, Wolfring here. So today we're going to look at another problem that is very close or similar, very close to a previous problem we solved, but it's actually not the same. So the problem is that we try to solve with the equation x squared plus the integer part of x equals to 3, and x is a, a real number. Okay, so in a previous episode, we actually look at uh, the equation of x cubed plus the integer part of x equals to 3. Remember that we draw the we can draw the a curve or graph of this function. It looks like this. Notice that um, it's basically x cubed with jumps at any uh, integer value of x. So any uh, x equals to an integer, it jumps plus one or minus one. Look like this. But in general, it's, but in general, is uh, monotonically increasing and it is one to one mapped to y. So anytime you have a y, uh, anytime you get a y value, you got a, a, a x value. So it's one to one mapped. All right. We can do the same for x squared plus integer part of x. Now it looks very different. First, it, it is actually, you can view it as in two parts. One is when x is larger than zero, it's close to x cubed. So it is basically x squared with jump at any integer value of x. But when x is smaller than zero, it is no longer monotonically decreasing. You can see there's overlap in certain uh, areas here, for example. Uh, if you draw a y as here, you can see there are two values, two solutions for x. Sometimes it's one solution, sometimes it's two solution, right? So if we, if we plot, the x equal uh, the y equals to three to this graph. You can see here lies two solution. Notice that x equals to, uh, so y equals to three um, is a kind of a threshold. Imagine if x is very very close to minus two, so x square is very very close to four, and the integer part of x is minus one. Because it's less than minus two, uh, because it's uh, larger, it's close to minus two, but it's larger than minus two. So this one actually is very, very, very close to three. But unfortunately, none of this is a solution for this, because it cannot equal to three. So it's although it's very close to three, it cannot be equal cannot equal to three. But anyway, so this graph give us uh, uh, some, the idea that we cannot solve. Using the same method, uh, just using um, a range of x and determine the uh, integer part of x and simplify this equation. That doesn't work. So we have to figure out another way to solve this. So uh, one way to solve this is that we use the decimal part of x. So we notice that the integer part of x is just x minus the decimal part of x because the integer part of x plus the decimal part of x equals to x, right? So we, we can replace the integer part of x with x minus the decimal part of x. So we get an equation look like this. The decimal part of x equals to x squared plus x minus 3. Okay? So why we want this? Because the decimal part of x is bounded. It is larger or equal to zero, but is strictly less than one, which means we get a uh, two inequality of x, of this quadratic uh, expression of x. It is between zero and one. This allow us to solve for the range of x that can satisfy this equation, that can possibly satisfy this equation, which will give us the hint or a very close um, range of the integer part of x. Okay, so let's solve that. So this is actually two inequalities. One is x squared plus x minus 3 larger or equal to 0. And then uh, for quadratic function, quadratic inequalities, you can solve it as a quadratic function. You get two roots. So if it's larger than 0, it means x lies larger than the bigger one and uh, less than a smaller one. So we write this in like a decimal um, approximate. So x is larger than 1.31 1 
or x is smaller than negative 2.31. Okay. Similarly, we can solve the other part, the other inequality. So this one is less than one, which means x squared plus x minus four is less than zero. It's less than zero. So the um, <clears throat> the range of x lies between the two roots of this quadratic function, and then we write it in decimal form. So uh, x is between minus 2.56 and uh, 1.56. So we combine those two range together. So such x can only uh, live between minus 2.56 and minus 2.31 and 1.31 and 1.56. So it has two ranges. The good part of this is that those two range give us a unique value of the integer part of x. So the integer part of x is either minus 2 or 1. Okay. The rest is easy. You just plug those in and you get x equals to negative square root of 5 or x equal to square root of 2. And then if you plug this in, negative square root of 5 is equal to negative 2.23. Uh, integer part is minus 2, so this 5 minus 2 is equals 3. Um, square root of 2 is 1.41, uh, so the integer part is 1, so 2 plus 1 equals to 3. And that's it for today.